Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about snowflake architecture. In the last video, I spoke about what is snowflake, a very high level architecture like what are the layers and components and also the features. But this video we are going to delve deep into the architecture and look at each of the components separately like what that component does and also the cost that is incurred for those components or services. So let's get started. So what is Snowflake? Snowflake you can consider is data warehouse as a service. So it is data warehouse on cloud or it can also be called as an enterprise analytics database. It's a cloud only option. All the cloud vendors like Amazon, Azure, Google have Snowflakes as Snowflake as a service. When we talk about Snowflake architecture, it's a hybrid architecture. When I say hybrid, it means that it is a combination of shared disk and shared nothing architecture. Physically, there are two separate layers. So at a broad level, Snowflake has three layers, cloud services, compute and storage. So if you look at layer wise or component wise, physically there are two separate layers, the compute and the storage. So they can independently scale as per need. But logically, those are integrated. We will see how in the coming slides. First of all, let's just look at or recap on shared disk and shared nothing to understand how Snowflake is hybrid. So first of all, what is the shared disk architecture? It is one of the architectures that are there for a distributed uh, system where each of the nodes has its own CPU or memory, but it shares the storage. So there is a network connection between the nodes and they are all sharing a common disk or a common storage. So the benefit of these kind of uh, architecture is that the read write operations are consistent, be consistent because it's not a distributed storage, it's a common storage getting accessed across the nodes in the cluster. So read write operations are easier and they are consistent, but it brings its own complexity like distributed locking or two-phase commit that needs to be implemented because the storage is shared. So this is a shared disk architecture. Similarly, what is a shared nothing architecture? Shared nothing architecture means the nodes are not sharing anything as the name says. There are, it's a cluster, it's again a distributed architecture pattern. It has multiple nodes which are connected via internet or network and they all have their own CPU, RAM as well as storage. So they are all independent of each other. The flip side or the disadvantage of this is that the data needs to be shuffled between the nodes which adds an overhead. But and also one more thing is that here the storage and the compute are scaling together. So when we look at uh, Snowflake, it is a hybrid or a combination of best of the features of both of these architectures. So typically this is how uh, the Snowflake architecture components look like. So we have three separate layers. One layer at the bottom is the data storage layer which is completely decoupled from the compute. This storage layer, this, this is offered in all the prominent cloud vendors, but this is where the data is getting stored. So the second layer is the compute layer of the virtual warehouse. Now this is the layer which is responsible for compute and you can create multiple virtual warehouses which are essentially cluster of nodes that are used for data processing. All of them are accessing the data storage layer. And on top we have the cloud services layer. This is like a, a master brain of Snowflake architecture and all the services like infrastructure, optimizer, transaction manager because Snowflake supports asset, security all are done at the cloud services level. So let's now go and double click into each of these layers and see what is the function of each of them and how do they operate. So first of all, let's look at the top layer, cloud services. Now what does cloud services layer do? This layer is also called as global services layer because this layer is responsible for controlling this whole architecture. It's like the brain of the snowflake. All the interactions that we want to do with snowflake will begin here, all interactions. So this layer particularly can scale independently of the other layers 
it it is run across multiple availability zones for high availability and this brain kind of controls every interaction that is being done with snowflake it has multiple services like authentication encryption access control query optimization query parsing so whenever a user submits a query it actually goes to the cloud services layer where you have all of these services to take care of the execution or the optimization when i say execution it is just trying to parse the query and optimize it actual execution will help uh, happen only through the compute layer and the data layer but this is kind of controlling that whole operation it can scale independently so that's the cloud service even the transactions that are maintained are maintained by one of the service called transaction manager to support asset transactions now how will the pricing of this layer work the pricing of the cloud services layer is included in snowflake pricing but in case because this is some service which is getting used for every interaction that we are doing with the snowflake whether this query is a small query or one or complex whatever is happening the the request is getting right routed through the cloud services if the usage of the cloud service goes 10% more than the compute usage then we'll be billed for this cloud services every query that we fire on our snowflake setup is going to consume some amount of cloud services one way to reduce that cost is like we know at snowflake provides multiple caches at every layer cloud services compute data storage there are query caches that can be reutilized for a query which has already been run so you, snowflake doesn't necessarily run the query every time it uses the cache to fetch the results so if we do that that will reduce the cost of the cloud services but essentially only when the usage is 10% more than the compute usage then we will be billed for the cloud services now coming on to the next service which is the middle layer compute now what is this compute layer this compute layer can also be called as virtual warehouse what does this layer do this virtual warehouse is responsible for the processing that is happening in snowflake this is independent of the cloud services and the storage layer in terms of scaling the user can spin up multiple virtual warehouses for different kind of user and those warehouses can actually be of different capacity based on the need all of these virtual warehouses that the user will spin up will actually interact with the same data which is stored in the storage layer but there would be no contention between them all of these warehouses are independent of each other this is a very beautiful and unique feature of snowflake where we are spinning up multiple warehouses which are independent although they are accessing the same data also they can be started and stopped at any time even when your cluster is running or the virtual warehouse is running we can scale that warehouse and we can actually scale it in two ways one is like a vertical scaling or resizing of the capacity of the cluster Uh, so not exactly vertical scaling but this is like resizing of the cluster where we are increasing the capacity and then the other way is to add more clusters so if we look at how snowflake operates the configuration that a virtual warehouse can have are extra small small medium large extra large 2x 3x and 4x large and the numbers mentioned here are telling us how many nodes are there in the cluster so if it is extra small it has one node if it is 4x large it is 128 so that is it is increasing in the multiples of 2 so we can either increase the size of the cluster or we can keep adding additional clusters so there are two ways to scale it and even while it the virtual warehouse is running it can be scaled how does the pricing work now the pricing in snowflake is per second billing so how, what is the amount of compute that we are using and how much is our execution time both of these will determine what is the cost if i am running my virtual warehouse for let's say 2 hours versus 4 hours of course the cost will be different also based on the size of the cluster how much compute are we using 
So there is a titration that we have to get to the exact number. How big should be our cluster? Should we actually add more clusters or should we scale or resize the existing one? That is something that we should decide and do a bit of titration to get a get to a good number. But essentially, one thumb rule to remember is if we want more compute capacity, we should resize the cluster. So a bigger cluster running for one hour versus a smaller cluster running for two hours, that kind of a comparison we should do. Also, if the thumb rule is if the compute capacity is needed, we will resize or scale up. If we need concurrency, that means we need more users actually hitting uh, uh, our, our compute and we need concurrency, we will add multiple clusters. So number of also the number of servers per cluster will determine the cost. So if I'm using a 4x cell versus an Excel, of course, there will be a cost difference because the number of servers is different. The number of clusters, if there are multi cluster warehouses, that will also determine the cost and the time where each of these clusters are running. So essentially it is two things, the number of clusters or number of servers in the cluster and the time for which they are running. These two will determine the cost of our snowflake compute. Now coming to the last layer, which is the storage layer where we are actually storing the data. Now storage is nothing but a centralized database storage which holds the entire data. Data is always compressed and encrypted by default. The encryption is AES-256 which Snowflake uses by default. Any data structure or semi-structure that we put into Snowflake is compressed and encrypted by default. The data is stored in a columnar format and Snowflake will automatically organize and store the data into micro partitions. So the benefit is since it is compressed, it will cost us less because the pricing is on the compressed size of the data. It is also known as a remote disk layer, this whole storage layer. The benefit here is, like I said, the storage is decoupled from the warehouse or the compute. It can scale independently. There is no contention even when multiple warehouses are connecting to this data storage. As far as the pricing goes, the storage costs are calculated based on the daily average size of compressed rather than uncompressed data. Means because it is by default compressed, so if you are having one terabyte of data, you are not charged for one terabyte. You are charged for whatever is the size of the data after compression. Now, uh, of course, there is a per, uh, there is a charge on the data, but there are certain features that Snowflake gives, like zero copy cloning. So when it comes to pricing of zero copy cloning, zero copy cloning is nothing but a snapshot of your current database. It's a metadata copy only. You are not actually copying the entire data. So the clone will not be charged unless we are doing some operations like adding something, adding some table, deleting, doing some changes. Till then the clone is not charged. So that's a huge benefit. The any data that is deleted, this is one important point to remember, even if the data is deleted, but if it is available for restore, that means Snowflake is storing it, hence it will be charged. The storage cost primarily will include two things. One, the persistent data which is stored in the permanent tables and second, any staged file that we are used using for loading and unloading. So cost is on compressed data. Zero copy clones are not charged unless there is some change to them. Also, any data which is deleted but cannot can be stored is uh, restored is charged. So this is how storage will get char charged. So this was a quick summary of three components, cloud services, compute and storage and the pricing details of those uh, components. I hope this gives a good detail information about the architecture and how snowflake is organized so thanks everyone for listening in please like share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you so much